So please, oh please, we beg, we pray, go throw your TV set away and in this place we can install a lovely bookshelf on the wall. What can you guys think about that? I mean the lines, not how I delivered it. Well, the relationship between literature and television is very much like the relationship between literature and cinema. If you haven't watched that video, I'll link it here and in the description so we don't have to repeat ourselves. But while the link between literature and cinema can be summed up to the phrase literature on big screen, the association of literature and television can be summed up to the phrase literature on small screen. Literature on small screen is not new. In fact, serial storytelling has long been infused into television. It's been widespread specifically due to the advent of television technology and the latter half of the 20th century has had a profound effect on how audiences view literature. As the spectacular growth of television peaks, wealthy of literary source texts have also been incorporated into shows alongside sitcoms, soap operas, and other TV series. We can argue that this actually goes beyond just mindless adaptations. There's myriads of forms and techniques which influence the small screen. Not only is there intertextual allusion and multithreading that is multiple plot lines running through a season or a series, we also see intricate visual style, abundance of literary and cultural cultural references, defiance of genre category, and even sharp social criticism. Television, then, is an important literary agent. Before all these social media platforms, television has been the chief medium of popular entertainment as well as a serviceable means to introduce literature of the past to the younger generations. There's been a remarkable number of TV series that are based on literary works. To name a recent few, we have Game of Thrones, House of Cards, Boardwalk Empire, Orange is the New Black, The Handmaid's Tale, Penny Dreadful, Big Little Lies, and Sherlock. It has also been an important means of educating people as seen from programs designed to teach, especially children. These TV programs also heavily use literature in their instructional arsenal. Moreover, television is an everyday literary dose. Unlike movies, it's everyday, so it is in a better position to consistently and regularly condition us and influence us. It has had sociological impacts that shape our psyche, lifestyle consumption, and many other aspects of our existence. Television shows a heightened desire to represent moral ambiguity and emotional truths just as literature does. Us. Television shapes us and reshapes us, great shows that are bold, clever, and sophisticated, flourish intellect and emotions, and offer us a wide variety of choices. Just as we do to literature, we respond to television and discuss their underlying messages, multi-protagonist complex stories, and even the greater satirical distance between the characters and their stereotypes. For example, TV has made dedicated teachers to be tough and criminals like the protagonist of Breaking Bad. Television's literariness or literary imagination may further be reinforced by looking at the background of many TV writers and producers which could have informed their character conception, narrative structures, and stylistic techniques. For instance, Matthew Weiner, the creator of Mad Men, studied literature history and philosophy before going to film school. David Benioff and D.B. Weiss, the creators of a very popular Cream of Thrones, were both advanced students of Irish literature. Executive producer of Sex and the City, Jenny Bix, obtained a degree in English literature. Even the showrunner of the sitcom 30 Rock, Robert Carlock, was a history and literature major back then. So maybe it's safe to say that not all stuff from TV are garbage? This being said, let's go back to the intro. The lines kind of create a hierarchy between literature and television, don't you think? Because it asks us to replace TV with books. However, from a perspective inspired by the inextricable relationship between literature and television, we have to invoke transmediality. This is to refuse to identify one as a higher form of expression than the other or that literature literature is a high culture inspiration for the popular culture of television or that literature is a yardstick by which TV shows must be measured. Rather, we need to go recognize the intricate and complex relationship between the written text and the small screen whose existence is very much mutable. Television thus may not be seen as the low culture also backing on John Story's definitions of pop culture, right? Rather, it is something more clever. As Anna Biasha stated, TV is claimed to be like visual novels because of the very length of the narrative, the slow construction of the fictional world, and the development of characters like the kin attention to details that gradually acquire importance and density in repeated patterns of action. Television can satisfy readers' expectations, at the same time demand that these expectations be challenged. While texts are mutable and immovable, television produces a postmodern form of art that is more popular and more dynamic. Television has earlier proven that literature can equally and regularly circulate through technology, where authorship is more plural and diffuse. And up until today, we willingly inhabit both forms.